Sue McCarty here, registered holistic nutritionist at the Caledon East Family Chiropractic Clinic. And today we're going to be talking about body fat. There are three types of body fat and I'm going to be talking about one in particular today. The first type of body fat is called subcutaneous body fat. And this is the body fat that resides just underneath the skin, so between the skin and the organs. So if you think about the um, phrase pinch an inch, that is your subcutaneous body fat. It lies right under the surface of the skin and you can pinch it. Um, the second type of body fat is called ectopic body fat. This represents a very small percent of your total body fat. It, there is a small amount of body fat that does reside in some of the cells of your body. Again, this makes up a very small amount of your total body fat. So that's the second type, type of body fat. It's called ectopic. The type of body fat that I'm going to be talking about today is called vat fat. And if you've never heard that term, let's dive in and figure out what it is. Vat fat stands for visceral adipose tissue. So this is the most dangerous type of body fat for your overall health, and it lies deep within your belly. It's deep belly fat. It surrounds your organs. Um, so you can't pinch it. It's deeper than that, and it lies right around your midsection. So why is this a dangerous type of body fat to have? Well, it turns out, recent research shows that visceral adipose tissue or vat fat is actually an endocrine organ. It's not just there holding up your pants, but it is secreting a pro-inflammatory chemical. So yes, that's right, the deep abdominal fat is actually causing inflammation in your body. And hopefully by now you know that inflammation is the root cause of many major diseases, and it is in our best interest to decrease overall chronic inflammation levels in our body. So we need to decrease that vat fat essentially. So why is it bad for us? Why um, is vat fat a dangerous type of uh, fat to have in our body? Well, not only does it secrete inflammation, but it will actually increase uh, chances that you have insulin resistance. So what does this mean? Your body doesn't respond as well to insulin. So insulin is a fat storage hormone, so it can actually promote more storage of body fat over time. So not only are we increasing inflammation in our body, but we're increasing further fat storage just by having that visceral adipose tissue. So obviously that's not good. Um, it will increase your cholesterol levels potentially, which obviously we don't want that to happen either. And that fat or visceral adipose tissue can also increase your risk for cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and poor metabolic health. So obviously none of these are good things. So we do want to decrease that overall visceral adipose tissue. How do we know if we have visceral adipose tissue? Well, there's two very simple ways that you don't even have to go to your doctor um, to figure out if you have visceral adipose tissues. There's no fancy tests necessarily that you have to do, but there's very two very simple methods that you can do yourself and they both involve a tape measure. So we're gonna first talk about basically your circumference around your waist, your waist circumference. So we measure that with a tape measure. Um, so for men and women, we want our waist circumference around your belly button to be less than or equal to half of, the, of your height. So for a six foot male, a six foot man, Six feet is 72 inches, so we divide that by two. So that six foot tall male, their waist circumference with a tape measure should be 60, sorry, 36 inches or less. So we take that 72 inches divided by two um, for a six foot tall male. So 36 inches or less around their belly button. And let's take a five foot two average height woman as an example. Um, so that works out to 62 inches in height for that woman. Again, we divide that by two and the waist circumference of that particular woman around the belly button should be 31 inches or less. 
Um, so that's your your first way of calculating, um, you know, your waist circumference, and uh, if that's putting you in danger at having more visceral adipose tissue. The second method is calculating your waist to hip ratio. So I'm gonna insert some footage right now of me explaining how to calculate your waist to hip ratio. Again, this is something you can do at home with a tape measure. You should know these metrics because we want to keep those numbers in check. Um, obviously that will help reduce your risk for many fairly major diseases. Um, and then I'm gonna come back at the end of this video and I'm gonna give you some tips and strategies to help decrease those numbers, um, which in turn is gonna improve your overall health and uh, reduce the likelihood that you may contract some of these major diseases. So here comes the clip of me explaining how to calculate your waist to hip ratio, and I'll be back at the end with some strategies. Tip Tuesday, here's a quick tutorial on taking your own waist to hip ratio. Please remember that scale is not always a best indicator of your progress or of your overall health. The number on the scale is just a number. It doesn't take into account the percent of body fat that you have or the percent of muscle that you have. So please remember that. So um, tape measure can be an excellent tool at measuring your progress because generally as you see the numbers go down, that means you're losing body fat and probably gaining muscle because muscle is denser and more compact than body fat. So the numbers will go down. So that's just a little side tip. Anyways, back to waist to hip ratio. So we're gonna take that tape measure. We're gonna put it around your belly button. So I am coming in at about 28 inches around my belly button. And then I'm gonna take that same tape measure and I'm gonna put it around the widest part of my hips, which is usually at the greater trochanter or the hip bone. So that's usually where the best place to measure or the widest part of your hips. And I'm coming in at 35 inches there. So then we take the first measure around your belly button, we divide it by the second measurement. So I've already run my own numbers and my waist to hip ratio came in at 0.8. So men should come in at 0.9 or less on their waist to hip ratio and women should come in at 0.85 or less on their waist to hip ratio. So what does this measure? Um, it really measures how much body fat is distributed around the midsection. That's kind of the dangerous body fat, the uh, body fat that's lying in and around the organs, and it can put you at a higher risk for diabetes, heart disease, poor metabolic health. So we wanna work at improving that number and getting them in range over time. I've got some tips below, um, and you can always reach out if you need some help getting started but you should definitely be aware of your own waist to hip ratio and keep track of that over time as one of your overall health metrics. Happy Tuesday. Drop me a note if you need some help. Okay, so now we know what that fat or visceral adipose tissue is. We know why it is dangerous and it's the most dangerous type of uh, body fat that we should have. We know how to measure it. Um, via your waist circumference and your waist to hip ratio. Now we're gonna talk about some strategies to improve those numbers. I want you to get a tape measure, measure that um, abdominal area. I want you to figure out your waist to hip ratio. You should know your numbers and um, we're gonna work at improving those numbers over time because that's gonna improve your overall health. So here are my top six strategies to help you decrease your vat fat or your visceral adipose tissue. Number one, we need to be moving more, plain and simple. You need to move your body and sweat every day. So you wanna be aiming for 7,500 plus steps per day. So if you have a Fitbit or just an app on your phone, uh, we just need to move more throughout the day. That's gonna promote more calorie burning. It's gonna improve your metabolism. It also is very beneficial to strength train, to lift heavy things, to use weights two to three times per week. What this does is increase the muscle on your body and muscle will increase your metabolism. It makes you stronger, um, it improves your overall health, but it helps you with fat storage and it helps boost your metabolism so you don't store as much body fat. So we need to move more, that's number one. Number two, 
cut out sugar and refined carbohydrates as much as possible. 90% of the time I want you to be cutting out that sugar and those processed carbohydrates because they do tend to spike your blood sugar and they're very, very inflammatory um, in general, but they do spike up your blood sugar and that causes your body to release insulin to manage that sugar in the blood and insulin is a fat storage hormone. So when our blood sugar goes up and insulin is released, we tend to store more body fat. So cut out that sugar, cut out those refined carbohydrates. If you need help doing that, come and see me, I'll help you with that. Number three, balance your blood sugar. Every time you eat, and I've created a whole other video on that on our Calavanese channel, so please check that out. But every time you eat, you should be combining a source of protein with dietary fiber and dietary fat. This is gonna keep your blood sugar levels more stable. Um, when we eat a little bit higher in carbohydrates, we're gonna get those spikes um, in blood sugar, which again is gonna cause more insulin release, which is again going to cause more storage of body fat. So we need to balance our blood sugar by combining a protein with a fiber and a source of healthy dietary fat. If you don't know how to do that, again, come and see me, I can help you do that. By the way, all of my four week done for your meal plans that are available through the office are designed to reduce, reduce inflammation and balance your blood sugar. So I, that is a very easy dietary fix. So balance your blood sugar, that's strategy number three. Strategy number four, we need to make sure we're getting enough sleep and managing your stress levels. Because when you don't sleep enough or you're stressed out all the time, your body releases a hormone called cortisol. This is your primary stress hormone. And what cortisol does, it is it tends to store body fat, especially around the belly. So we need to keep cortisol levels lower by managing your stress levels and making sure you're getting enough sleep. So those are lifestyle um, tweaks that you can do to decrease your visceral adipose tissue. Um, number five, eat real food. Cut out processed food 90% of the time because processed foods are stripped of fiber, they're stripped of nutrients, there's not much in there that's gonna nourish your body and your cells and keep you healthy and strong and give you good energy. Uh, plus processed foods, to, again, tend to spike that blood sugar a little bit higher and then you're gonna release more insulin, which is going to cause more storage of body fat or vat fat. So cut out your processed foods, eat real, whole, one ingredient foods most of the time. And number six, we wanna aim for a 14 to 16 hour fast at night where you're not consuming food and you're allowing your body to finish digesting and do some cellular cleanup. There are so many benefits for a fast overnight. Again, I've created a whole other video on intermittent fasting and what it is and the benefits. But for the uh, purposes of this video, the 14 to 16 hour fast, the benefit in terms of decreasing your vat fat is that your body is going to have to turn to stored body fat for fuel instead of using carbohydrates that are roaming constantly through your body for fuel. So you're going to end up uh, teaching your body to use body fat for fuel instead of carbohydrates. And this teaches your body to be a fat burner. Um, it is great for your metabolic health. So aiming for a 14 to 16 hour fast overnight is going to gradually help decrease that visceral adipose tissue or that fat, 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 fat as well. So those are my top six strategies. Feel free to screenshot for reducing your visceral adipose tissue which in turn is gonna decrease inflammation in your body. It's gonna improve overall health um, and you're just gonna feel better and look better. So that's our video for today. So that fat, we don't want it. It's dangerous. It poses many different health risks. It increases your chance of inflammation, which we wanna keep at a low level um, for overall health. Now you know how to calculate it um, very easily with a tape measure. And we know some strategies to help decrease your visceral adipose tissue over time. Now, if you need more help, I'm at the Caledon East Family Chiropractic Clinic every Thursday from 2 till 6 p.m. And I am here to help you improve your overall health and wellness. So please pop in and say hello and, um, and come in and meet me. And also, I would appreciate if you gave the video a like, a thumbs up, um, and share it with somebody that you might 
think might find it helpful and uh, might help them improve their overall health as well. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our practitioner content for 2024 because we are here at the Caledonese Family Chiropractic Clinic to help you become the healthiest version of yourself um, now and forever. So like, subscribe, and share. And I will be back next month with another video to help you improve your overall health.